Christy talked about the need for us to have broader political action uh, and I endorse it totally. You know, we're all getting a little bit of pleasure at the moment. Um, I think there's that German word, what is it, Schadenfreude, it means taking malicious pleasure in the pain of other people. And I've got a bit of Schadenfreude for Tony Abbott at the moment. I've been watching it as we all have with the greatest pleasure as you watch his leadership fall apart day by day and the, 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 he gets paler and the, the bones stick out more and you can see defeat and hopelessness in his eyes. You can see like a beaten dog, like a cur. You can see that he's been beaten down and he's about to lose the thing that he's always wanted to be. He's got to the top of the summit, he's got to the top of Everest and he's fallen down a big f***ing cliff after about two minutes. great to see because he's not going to survive now he's got no hope but you see that's a danger for us that's a danger for us and we all know it because whether it's Turnbull or Bishop whose people have been selectively leaking to take him out over the last period of time in revenge for the way that they feel the West Australians have been treated and she's been treated by Abbott or whether it's Turnbull you're going to see a cosmetic repositioning of this government to the centre. And they'll knock the dags off a few things here and there. He call them barnacles. But they'll be more effective about it than, than him. Because Abbott's got a reptile brain. He's got a little brain. He just keeps repeating the same things again and again. He hasn't got the capacity to turn around to be subtle and to be strategic in the way that he operates. But by Christ, Turnbull has, in my judgment. But what will not change? is the political and economic narrative and driving forces behind this government. And that is to concentrate more wealth and power in the hands of the 1% and to take it away from the masses. And because trade unions like the Maritime Union, the CFMEU and the other unions that we work with, the ETU, the AMW and so on, we will continue to be opposed by them. And so what we need to do is less of what I just did, which is have a bit of fun playing games about who the leader, the captain of the ship is, and think about who owns the ship that is Australia, and who's really driving it. And we need to educate our members. We've got to talk about what tools delegates need. The primary one they need from the union is a bit of a framework to look at the world and understand why things are happening in the workplace to them, and then the ability for them to do something about it. So we analyse the situation, we look at it, we understand it, and then we have the tools for change. Mass collective action, political action, a, a loud and coherent voice that intersects with the things that people in our community care about. And what do they care about? Christie's already talked about a lot of them. The use of workers on low wages from other countries, exploited labour to undermine hard one job security wages and conditions in this country, whether it's offshore or whether it's on a construction site onshore and in other places. The destruction, the deliberate vandalism and destruction of our manufacturing industry, the motor vehicle industry, the, the shipbuilding industry, because he's promised the ships to Japan, the submarines to Japan, and uh, of course, um, the building products manufacturing industry, a big industry that no one talks about much, but which has been decimated by the policies of free trade and free trade agreements. And you're going to see, you've seen through the Korean FTA, you're going to see through the Chinese uh, FTA, and you'll see through the Trans-Pacific Partnerships, the ideal world of the neoliberals coming in, which is the, access, the ability to access labour from wherever you want, at whatever price you want for employers, any time you want from anywhere in the world. That's what those free trade agreements are about. We need to explain that to people, and we also need to explain that the enemy can never be the worker that's being exploited and sweated from somewhere else. The enemy is the power structure and the boss that exploits that power structure. That's one of the things we've got to explain to people. In our own union, of course, uh, we're facing lots of challenges. Um, I mean, the Royal Commission did a bit of a circuit around, had a bit of a go at the West Australian uh, MUA last year, 
Uh, I think they'll be back. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think they didn't get their research and their bearings right. They're going to come back in my judgment. I, I don't have any inside info, but they're not going to leave you alone in my view, and they're certainly not going to leave our union alone. Um, last year, you know, they came out with a big blaze of glory, lots of lurid stories about corruption, um, lots of lurid stories, uh, again, targeting individuals, smearing them, dragging their names through the mud, and when it comes to corruption or criminality within my organisation, or indeed the MUA, they got a big fat f***ing zero. And that's because we don't tolerate that within our organisations. Issues around the Health Services Union and some of those others, which had corruption that no trade unionist could ever contemplate accepting or turning a blind eye to, the courts were dealing with them anyway. So the opportunism hasn't worked from so far, but they're gonna have another crack this year. But the attacks are all over the place. Mick Buck and I know will talk about the WA 76. 76 workers being individually prosecuted for attending a rally that a lot of you would have been at for jobs, for manufacturing, for apprenticeships, against the exploitation of overseas labour. They go up the street, they march up the street, they take a stand that every Australian citizen ought to be proud to take and they get prosecuted by their own government. And I just got an email while I was sitting over there on my little phone. Nigel Hatchkiss from, the, the, from Abbott's Building Commission has sent another email out saying, uh, watch out, if you go to the rally, we're gonna prosecute you next week. That's what we're reduced to. And he's actually relying on laws that were never properly repealed by Labor. So our political action has got to be twofold. We've got to put every single effort we can into removing this government. And it won't be an Abbott government. It'll probably be a Turnbull government. It might be a Bishop government. Oh, God help us, that murderous, born-again thug from the Shire in Sydney. Uh, what's his name? Morrison. One of them, but they're all the same. They're all the same. They're a nest of snakes. They're a nest of vipers out of the same, out of the same uh, bloody hollow log of long grass. Whichever one of them it is, we have to look at what happened in Victoria, what happened in Queensland. And we have to say, what can we do as trade unionists, as workers, as members of the community, to have a strike to take these people out? Because if you have a Conservative government re-elected federally, it's great to do over the, you know, Mad Newman in, in Queensland and the pathetic vet in Victoria, Nat Thune and all those people, that's great. But where power lies in this country now, politically, is with the federal parliament. And the sort of cases that, that Will talked about before, I mean, you can win that case, if they can change the law, they will, right? At the moment, they're snowed up. We've done a lot of work around the crossbenches. They wanted to bring in a much, much harder building code. They haven't been able to get it through. And we've done a lot of work talking to those crossbenches. The ABCC, they want back. They want significant elements of work choices back, not in one big block, but bit by bit by bit. You can't rely. I mean, the crossbenches are so far knocking it back, but it's like a crumbly dam, you know? Sooner or later, they're going to get some stuff through. And if they get re-elected, they will get stuff through. They'll have a Productivity Commission report, I'm sure Dave Oliver talked about it, that'll lay out the template. So our responsibility is to our families, to our communities, to our kids and the generations that aren't even here yet, to make absolutely sure that we get rid of them. But not only that, that when we get a Labor government, and we will get one, we don't get a repeat of the farcical days of Martin Ferguson and people like that selling out the working class while they're being paid by them. We don't get a situation, and it doesn't matter if it's Rudd or Gillard, where they think that they're clever enough to keep the ABCC in place, the main elements of the ABCC, and they get their industrial relations advice, advice off, off chameleons like Heather Ridd out from the employers. We actually need to get a Labor government which is prepared to act on 457s, to act on local manufacturing, to say no to free trade agreements, to say no to the ABCC, and to stand up for the interests of working Australians.